rock. rock. By you thought of as dead. Fit for the walls of a tomb. Ocean's lightless bed. Sheer mountain cliff. Cold, silent bear. The wide dunes of the desert full of the dust of despair. But underneath, I'm alive. Earth's perpetual shifting of red-footed crust. Sinking, warping, lifting. Moving. Moving, moving. Keeping the world at one. With molten coal <clears throat> beneath. And the air above. And the sun. I flow, spread, crack. I build, break down, remold. Layered beds of sediment. Fold on mountain fold. Lacanith and Pluton. Pipe and dike and vein. Wrench, fault and rift valley. Shelf and penaplane. I, I am the living rock. rock. Look into the future, though not too far. To a time when cities have become self-ruling. And even the national parks have their own separate governments. <coughs> when democracy has given way to benevolent dictatorship, it seems. And here, on the tours, we have our own philosopher king. Just as the ancient Greeks suggested. But Mayak is what we call him now. His writings go to fire the people, those of them that are not robotic. Man and woman, they read his essays or watch online as he gives lectures. This sees a way of life. And while that one believes its code, through the mayor, whose name is Coriander Haken, is secretly communicating. But with whom? And for good use? Or elsewise? Day after day, he sits in judgment, helping the people. Gentle Haken. <coughs> Steeped in logic, in Aristotle, in Locke and Hume and Kant and Nietzsche, in Wittgenstein and Merleau Ponty, Thomas Nagel and Galen Strawson. But in the background, powerful ones, those who are actually running things, remain invisible. Broadcast the voice of authority. Take control. <coughs> Even make dissidents disappear.
Come here. Oh, Ian, you uh, startled me. I didn't see you there. I just came to see how you're doing. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, doing okay. Good. I mentioned to Tiara what you were telling me about the other day, about the pink granite at Trollsworthy and the mega cristic granite at Haytor, with its porphyroblastic rather than its phenocrystic orthoclase. Have I got that right? <coughs> yep. I think that's how you described it. Tiara was wondering if it might be possible to mix some pink stones in with the other ones to give the wall, well, more texture. Oh, really? Because yesterday you said you wanted them all the same. Did I? Well, I, I'm sorry about that, but Tiara at breakfast was quite insistent that you put pink stones in the wall. Right, I'll see what I can do. Don't feel you have to stay out here and watch. I'm happy to get on with the wall and you must have things to do. Oh, don't worry about me. Sorry, then. <coughs> Did I tell you about the self-driving cars? Uh, I don't think so. I well, knew you had one. We met another one in the lanes the other day. Really? Both of them refused to reverse. <laughs> oh, yeah? Why was that then? Well, each of them thought the other one needed to reverse. Their algorithms must have been telling them identical things because they both seem to think and insist that the other one go back before the other. So how did you sort that out then? Uh, well, Ian, there you are. Shouldn't Astol be working? Uh, shouldn't you be working? We were just talking about the self-driving cars that wouldn't reverse. Yes, shocking. We sat there for nearly an hour. Couldn't you just put it into manual override and reverse that to a passing place on your side? Oh, I wasn't going to let Ian be bullied into reversing for a self-driving car. I know the road, and there was a perfectly good passing place a few metres back on their side. Right. Uh, to be fair, Tiara, it was a little bit tight. I expect the uh, self-driving cars are programmed to allow a little bit of leeway when reversing so they don't scratch on the granite that grows in the hedges in the summer. You know how easy it is for a dislodged piece of granite to be hidden by the leaves. Don't contradict me, Ian. You were as angry as I was at the time. In Dartmoor, wasn't the National Park, we could bulldoze some decently flat roads, tear down the hedge roads, so self-driving cars wouldn't need to reverse. Any any road safety expert would recommend that. What a philistine you are. Oh. Only an out and out barbarian could suggest such a stupid thing. What civilized person would want to bulldoze Dartmoor's beautiful hedges? Think of all the ecological corridors you'd be destroying. And the heritage. Most of these hedge banks date back to Anglo-Saxon times. Ah, but the Romans who came before the Anglo-Saxons they had no compulsion about bulldozing beautifully straight roads through the ancient boundaries. Uh, uh, Astle, I've just noticed that stone over there looks very different from the others. Yeah, Ian said you wanted stones with more pink feldspar crystals in them. Mm, well, now that I see it in situ, I'm not so sure. Oh, for no, no, I think you need to change it. But it's in the wall now. Well, it needs to be out of the wall. Ian, come back inside. Astle doesn't need you breathing down his neck. You are the CEO of the country's leading energy provider. Not the foreman of a gang of builders. You don't know anything about walls or rocks. Are you coming? So, Danny. Mr. Crocker. So then, Mr. Crocker, since we're being grown-ups, how can I help you today? I've kind of got my best friend, Mayor Hagen. And what about your best friend? She has... 
Well, it's difficult to know how to, how to put this. We'll try. She's fallen under the spell of Pan. The ancient Greek god? No, Pan. What do they call it? It's your system of philosophy. Ah, you mean panpsychism. That's the one. Apparently, according to Calliope, everything on the planet contains consciousness. The result being, she's fallen in love with her favourite rock and spends all her spare time climbing up the tour to go and talk to him instead of doing normal things like having fun with me. <coughs> she and I grew up together. And, see, we've sort of been like brother and sister until this. And? And it's all because of your horrible panpsychosis. Panpsychism. And by the way, I didn't invent it. And also... Whatever. I'm not interested. I just want my friend back. I was going to say, I never said rocks were conscious. She says you say there's consciousness in everything. Yes, but that's not the same thing as saying everything is conscious. Isn't it? <coughs> By no means. You see this table? Yes. Well, it contains the stuff of consciousness. Little bits of energy buzz that scientists call electrons. But anyone can see it's not conscious. I could kick it and it wouldn't feel a thing. See? No response. Not an ow or a grimace. Are you sure? It made a dull sound. How do I know whether you're conscious and feel? I'm not sure. How then? Like this. How? <laughs> you see. But the table, on the other hand, nothing. You can hammer it as hard as you like. Yes, there's the dull thud of my hand on wood, but nothing that we would recognise as an unpredictable reaction which is characteristic of a conscious being. So? Well, would that be true for a country? Like how, Dartmoor? How do you mean? Well, presumably, you'd accept that it contains conscious beings? Certainly. But isn't conscious itself? No, definitely not conscious. So, you could hammer it as hard as you like. Bombs, invasion, without the country feeling anything. Clever. Some warmongers have looked at it like that, yes. But you wouldn't agree with them? No, I would not. A country is an arbitrary construct. When a general is invading a country, he, or she, is hammering on the heads of a collection of conscious beings. Suppose they were robots. They looked like humans, but weren't <coughs> actually conscious. Ah, you mean pea zombies. Pea zombies? What are they? Philosophical zombies. Hypothetical entities that are identical in every respect to humans, except they're not conscious and don't feel pain. Only they're not hypothetical anymore, are they? Technology has finally done it. They're among us. You know then. How could I not know when I've been seriously done over by one? Everybody knows some of those around us masquerading as humans are actually robots, even if the authority won't admit it. But they can't be conscious, or they wouldn't behave like they do. Utterly cold. Are we still speaking philosophically? <coughs> if so, um, have you read Thomas Nagel's paper, What Is It Like To Be A Bat? No, I haven't. How's that going to help anything? Well, Nagel posits <laughs> that an organism has consciousness if and only if there is something that it is like to be that organism. Yes, but how do you tell that? How can you distinguish a human from an android robot at first meeting? How do you sort the inanimate from the sentient? The ruthless cold from the tender warm? That seems, to that seems to be the most important ethical question in the world to me. The best guide is their faces when they're hurt. <coughs> android <coughs> robots don't feel pain because they're not conscious. But you can usually see genuine pain in a hurt human's face. Well, how is it the robots cry out if you hit them then? It's not because they feel any pain, it's because they need to alert you to the fact that you might be breaking them. So, you mean to say that the only way I know for certain that you feel pain is like this? <laughs> oh! Ah, uh, oh, yes. Oh. I like the pained expression. How can your human mayor haken, unless of course you're a very good actor, you must not assault a dignitary. Are we under surveillance? I'm afraid so. That's disgusting. Listen, I like the way you argue, Danny. Mr Crocker, please. But everything is a bit more complicated than you think. No, it's simple, actually. 
My best friend has fallen for a rock because of you. How dare you patronise me? Good day, Mayor Haken. <sighs> she is as beautiful. Let's have schism. As the brightness of the middle of the day. Let's have schism. She has never known the moral cause. The night of doubt and despair. The moral oh, cause the of sunlight. separatism. Go on, get up. See you then, mate. You work me on the bar. in the morning. Yeah. You work me on the bar. Yeah. Trapped in a low wage tourist economy. Trapped working for the colonials. Roll on meaningful employment. Roll on the revolu rebels. Roll on the harvest rebels. <laughs> Good night, mate. Take care. I hope you dream about her, whoever she is. You have been observed. Thinking dangerous thoughts. How do you know what I was thinking? You're nothing but a voice. We know everything. Has <laughs> someone sold my internet data to you? We have methods. We have surveillance. Ah, what do you know about me? We know where you went last night. But it was dark. There was no moon. No one could have seen me. We have night vision. We saw you swimming in the river. Swimming in the river is not allowed. Wow, well, nothing's ever allowed, is it? Only what is good for the planet. Swimming in the river will disturb the fish. Wow, well, you can tell me what I can't do, but it doesn't mean you can read my thoughts. Be careful. The authorities have noted your defiant attitude. We are watching you. <laughs> I've been learning about panpsychism from my daughter. Oh, yes. Yeah, according to Calliope, she says Haken so that the entire universe is full of consciousness. Even inanimate things like rocks. Ah. You're supposed to be mayor of Dartmoor, looking out for the interests of the people. All he does is turn them into rock activists. The authorities will feel justified in banning us from taking rock crystals off the moor. And then where will we be? No crystals, no healing power. Everybody's sick and no money for us. The authorities should have made appointed me mayor. I thought the mayor was elected, not appointed. But everybody knows the election was rigged. That's a very cynical attitude, Mandar. So it's because you didn't get enough votes when you stood against him. Cynical, perhaps. But true, I think. Oh, hello, Ian. Hi. You're here for a healing session? Oh, I certainly am. Is Mandan at home? Yes. Ian, come in and lie back on the couch. <coughs> you can leave us now, for starting. <coughs> so. How have you been over the last week? Oh, majorly stressed, actually. Oh, dear. What's the trouble? Tiara and I have been arguing about the colours of the stones on the patio. <laughs> that hardly seems a likely trigger for major stress. Oh, but it is. Believe me. Are you sure there's not something deeper going on? No. Let me put this amethyst crystal on. 
amethyst is very good for relieving tension. Who's that? Thank you. Well, in fact, now you come to mention it, I have been feeling a little bothered about something. Can you tell me about it? Uh, I don't think so. Let me try this one on you. Yellow quartz for new beginnings and putting opportunities into action. Thank you. That feels good. <laughs> you still look tense. So tell me, what's really going on in your life? Well, Tiara and I did have a run-in with a, another self-driving car that wouldn't reverse when we were out in our car in the lanes. Artificial intelligence, ha! I ask you. They need to get their algorithms sorted. Exactly. But again, there's not a sufficient cause for major stress. Should I try this tourmaline on you? Tourmaline is supposed to be good for unhappiness and negativity. How does that feel? Crystalline? <laughs> yes, but is it helping you to focus on the stress? I think it is. And can you tell me about it? Well, I suppose it doesn't really matter. As you know, I'm the chief executive of the leading national energy provider. Yes. And in order to achieve our mission of reducing carbon emissions to a minimum in light of global warming. Go on. Well, we need to embrace, and I need to, the company needs to embrace Alternative energies completely. Good. Well, it's not good. When Tiara found out, she was absolutely outraged. <laughs> she kept calling me a, a first and a barbarian for even thinking of the idea. <laughs> the thought of wind turbines on the beautiful skyline of Dartmoor was anathema to her. So what are you it's going to... more or less open warfare in our house now. <laughs> so what are you going to do? I can't go on like this. We're going to have to embrace more nuclear power. I see. But that means my company will be associated with the authorities' plans to store nuclear waste in the rocks under the national parks like Dartmoor. And I would have to recommend that policy to my company. Otherwise, as a homeowner, well, at least a uh, holiday second homeowner, will be accused of nimbyism. But there's going to be no end of trouble. To right, it will cause no end of trouble. Nuclear waste buried on the moor. What's all that radioactivity going to do to the delicate energies of my Dartmoor rocks? <laughs> oh, I knew I should have kept quiet. <laughs> what did you do to him? He looked terrified. And so he should. He threatened us with the prospect of nuclear waste buried in our Dartmoor rocks. <laughs> I had no idea she would ring and you'd answer the phone. How many men have said that down the years? Well, of course I'm going to answer the phone if you're spending all your time gossiping with Astle on the patio. I had to pretend that you misspoke because you're under stress at work and there was no such plan. 
What an idiot! <laughs> You're the CEO of National Energy. You sign the official secrets act. You let this out to a crystal healing therapist. It is what it is. Well, I just have to get on with it. All I need to do is present a good case at a public meeting for the authorities' plan to store nuclear waste. Public meeting? We don't want the public to know anything about this. Public. Particularly not the fact that you're supporting the proposal. No, you are going straight back over there and you're going to persuade her that you told her a pack of lies. But she's no fool. She can sniff a rat when the... Shh, shh, is one. A rat! Oh, a rat! <laughs> Hello, Astol. <laughs> There were two of them. Rats. By the bins. I've told Ian to contact pest control. But he never does. Well, I suppose the rats must appreciate the stir of execution. Astor, just get on with your work now. Um, and make sure all the stones are the same grey colour. I've read that pink granite has three times the natural radioactivity of grey granite. Ian, come on! <laughs> I'm not quite sure what you heard back there. Oh, um, only something about rats. Ah, yes. Uh, we were talking about these new, clear waste bags that unfortunately the rats can see the food waste inside. Ah, uh, really? Hmm. Has the Darmore Council just brought those in then? Because I haven't seen any. Uh, they're hard to see because they're um, transparent. All oh, right. Yeah, that would be it. <laughs> Although, can't say I've seen any rats either. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, can I let you into a little secret? Oh, yeah? What's that, then? Well, what we were actually discussing was how it would be a waste to use the nuclear option of reporting that self-driving cars were unable to always decide when to reverse in the lanes. But rather, we would store the information up until we had collected enough to force the authorities' hands to bulldoze the hedgerows flat, make the roads wider, so that self-driving cars wouldn't have to reverse anymore. I see. So no rats. No. And no nuclear waste bags. Uh, no. <laughs> Just flattening the hedge banks. Well, yes. But, um... Right. Shh. It's hush, hush. Uh, Ian. Oh. Yes, come in, darling. Does that woman ever give me a break? Morning, women, mother. Thousand, little sister, I've been looking for you. I've got something I need to ask you. What's that, bigger brother? I want to put on a play. Well. Good for you. Go ahead. You'll have to run the gauntlet of the voice and make it cryptic enough to escape censorship. They don't like drama, the authorities. You remember how they reacted to the revival of a med theatre satire? <laughs> it's not that sort of play. You won't catch the attention of the censors. I want you and your friends to act in it. Really? What's going on, Danny? I want to send a message to Calliope. It's not something you do on your mobile phone. Ha ha, Damson. Look, I need, what should I call it? A parable, a fable. <sighs> something to get through to Calliope and how crazy she's being with her obsession about rock. I want to do something that shows rocks in a bad light. Look at them in the thunderstorm, perhaps? Be serious for once. Why should I help you out with your friendship problems? Remember how I helped out your friendship problems when you were being bullied at school last year and everyone started accusing you of being an android? How could anyone think I was a robot? Might have had something to do with that tune you kept on singing so relentlessly. That was designed to annoy the bullies. It annoyed me. Anyway, 
The point is, I sorted you out. All right. I suppose you did. What's this play going to be about then? And why do you want me and my friends to be in it? You normally ignore us completely. What about your mates, Danny? My, my friends are too well sophisticated to want to be in the type of play I'm planning. Great. So we've got to be in some sort of primitive children's play. Hey, Damson. Did I hear something about a play? Can I be in it? Why don't you ask Wayfarer and her friends? Hello, Wayfarer. Would you and your friends like to be in a play? Yes. What play? <laughs> the <laughs> message. It's a play about a witch turning people into stone. Medusa. We've been doing Greek mythology at school. No, not Medusa. Let's go somewhere where Dan's from sarcasm can't reach, and I'll tell you then. It reaches everywhere. You can't escape it. Like the voice. <laughs> Do not take the name of the voice in vain. <laughs> what are you doing? Is that writing with an old-fashioned biro? Uh, What's become of your smartphone, Astle? Well, it's the only way to be private nowadays. Not so private oh, now. There's a there's a cave deep under a tor where rays can't penetrate. No, no signal of a, a mobile phone or satellite. There, meet me, so we can hold discussions without surveillance. Danzen, you're out of order. Somebody could be listening. A secret assignation. Who are you meeting then? It's none of your business. How would you like it if I did that to you? Well, I've got to get my kick somehow. How? Dartmoor is such a boring place for a teenager. It's just rock. There's nothing here for us teenagers. No public transport, no theatres, no cinemas, no proper indoor sports facilities, no clubs, <laughs> no good job prospects. The mayor is supposed to make things better for us, but he just goes on about consciousness. Ugh. Unconsciousness might be better. <laughs> if you do anything at all provocative, the voice pipes up. If you put anything controversial on mine, the authorities message you and point out the consequences of doing it again. It'll hurt the planet. Everything's got to be good for you or good for the planet. Vomit! I hate the planet. I wish I could go, go, to, go to Mars. Well, maybe you'll be deported there as a delinquent. <coughs> now give me my piece of paper back. What do you reckon to the new girl, Lana? Strange. Arriving like that, in the middle of term. Is she from up north? Don't think so. Her accent's not northern. It's not southern either. Or eastern. Or western. It's a bit of a mystery. Could she be a robot? She told me she lived with her aunt. What happened to her mother? And her father? Oh yes, she told me she was looking for him. Her parents must have separated. She lost contact with her father then. Perhaps her mother died and, and now she's trying to get in touch with her father. 
sounds the most probable story. Yeah, but it's still a story though. Maybe we should just ask her. I agree. Otherwise it's just gossip. at dawn, smelling at midday of cordite and animal, an essence burnt off by the sun's rays. Fly and crack, crawling with chitin, head butting stars, shoulders that shove up the moon. As silver as a parlour bagatelle ball that sinks in silent steps through the night's constellations with its slow sleep tiptoe. Springboard being a platform to the sky, intruded into sandstone, igneous ingot, left standing proud when sediments have decayed like the breaking of moulds from molten their set. Greased and wrinkled, forted and veined, weathered, rough, ancient, split, <coughs> wide open. Dehiscent monolith, with its seeds of glitter spilling down the hillside, the ruins of a dome. Massive, whale-shaped, blunt-headed being, barging in the rain spray, shedding in the storm's wash, singing in the winds from the Atlantic deeps. Brock, she has heard us. The strange one. She seems to know. Let us speak with her. Who are you? I am Lana. Where are we? We are at the crossed ways, where four roads meet in a space. And someone passing by may pause and lean against this stone. This must be the place. I can hear voices in it and see the faces. <coughs> the hill hangs, they said, and this hill hangs. The land droops, they said, and this air and this land droops. The dusty crossways, they said, flattened to be split. And here is a level ground with a stone struck out of it, splitting. We waited, crouching mm. under the hang and hunch of the hill. How long has this stone stood here? This stone floated as, as an image to us. Once ethereal stuff that was bright came to the crossed ways in cold December from the frosted road. Mandan, the queen over the dark hill, <coughs> made it so for us and we the ones alone capable of corking up time had hoped to stand it still forever. The image there. And then her kin came and gave us sleep. They stole the image it sagged in inferior hands and faded was stone before they woke us. We could do nothing. But all we speak here is only explanation. All action is planned out for us, was drawn before 
long ago. We are left in the framework, only thoughts to juggle, only the each ways to perceive and interpret. Come then, ask what you will. Young one with ancient wisdom, you who have caught us by our secrets tale. Do you know where my father is? You seem troubled. Are you looking for someone? Yes, I believe my father is somewhere near. Oh, really? I haven't seen anyone in the vicinity. I know he's one of the Tors, <clears throat> but I don't know which one. One of the Tors? Your father? Oh, I come from another solar system. <laughs> My mother travelled here long ago from a planet you humans call Kepler 186F in the constellation of Cygnus on a voyage of exploration. She met a human and fell in love with him. Unfortunately, shortly after, he disturbed some witches whilst chasing a hare, and one of them turned him to stone. <laughs> he... My mother returned to Kepler-186F pregnant with me, and I grew up there never knowing who my father was. Eventually, my mother told me the story, and against her wishes, I secretly arranged to travel back here. Right. Um, I'm sorry, but you can't ask me to believe all that. Oh, believe what you like. I'm going on looking. <laughs> Has she been eating mushrooms? Wrong time of year. I suppose some people will persuade themselves of anything. What's this all about? I never knew this cave was here. Shush. Come away from the mouth. We need to stay deep down to avoid surveillance. Okay. What are you, what are you doing? Get off. Checking you for hidden cameras and recording devices. Oh, come on. Well, you can't be too careful. That's why I asked you to meet me in this cave. So what's going down? Oh. You know I've been building a patio for Ian over in Atworthy. Yes. The chap who hangs around watching you work at Chatskill Day. That's right. To avoid being indoors with his wife. You know, he's the CEO of National Energy. So I'm told. Well, the other day I overheard an argument he was having with Tiara. Tiara? I know her. She comes to the pub with him sometimes. So what are they arguing about? Well, she was having a go at him for revealing a secret to his therapist and thought they were shouting at each other like a piece together what it was about. Are you going to tell me then? The authorities intend to store nuclear waste in Dartmoor's rocks. What? But it's a national park. And besides, now it's self-governing and a democracy. So the people would never allow it. Self-governing? You must be joking. Mayor Haken, that philosophical clown, couldn't govern a school governor's meeting. As for local democracy, if the authorities intend to do something, they find a way. No, we're going to fight this on our own. How? Are you with me? No. What? I mean, I don't know what you're planning. Well, nothing yet. I just want to know that we're brothers in this. Come on. Yes, yeah. brothers. The fire horse flings forward the wind. What was that? It sounded like someone nearby. A uh, walker, I expect. Let's hope they didn't hear anything. I'm heading back. Are you coming? Yes, in a second. Fire horse flings forward the wind, <coughs> blaze the setting sun in one galloping gash. Fire horse the dark granite tall, rearing and shortly sinking. 
a short, short moment in the sunset. Then fierce rock is murked and shadowed. Fire horse the dark granite tall, rearing and shortly sinking. Wind dies down. What breath remaining can pass around grey stone, unfunneled? Fire horse the dark granite tall, rearing and shortly sinking. That was you in Winter Rock. I walk up the soft sheen of June turf with its embroidery of fairy flowers. Tormentals yellow, the white milkworts, blue heath speedwell and pink purple lousewort to reach the rock, clothed in the sun's light, caresses my face like a warm hand. I sit, looking out over the valley towards the sunset. The big sun bathes me in the rock with its level rays, a gentle rosy wind of photons, which warms us both before the chill of the night. How many sunsets has this rock seen? Millions knows so much. If only it could tell me. Calliope. I heard something. Was it the wind? Calliope. No, it, it definitely spoke my name. Calliope, Calliope. Say it again. Calliope, Calliope. I knew you were conscious, dearest rock. So, tell me, what's it like to be a rock? <laughs> Is that too personal a question? <laughs> Am I invading your privacy? I'm, I'm going to sit with my back to you, but please don't think it's because, well, I'm ignoring you. It's just that I'm used to leaning against a solid thing and gazing across this twilight valley from stone platform, which I'd assumed was structure that I didn't need to face, but could just depend on to be there for me. It's like being a rock. It spoke. Yes, spoke. Was that an echo? No. Oh, I think it might have been. Ask me something. That was definitely not an echo. It could have been the wind. Please, ask me something. That was definitely not the wind. The wind doesn't say please, but nod as a rock usually. <laughs> ask it something. <laughs> okay. Um, what's your name? Granite. I have to tell Danny. <laughs> she could have said goodbye. No manners. <laughs> <laughs>
everything is conscious. Everything is passable. Whoa, slow down. What does passable mean? Capable of feeling and suffering. Susceptible to emotion and sensation. <gasps> oh no, it's not. I was talking to Mayor Haken about it. Just because science contains conscious stuff doesn't mean it's conscious. Just like your beloved rock, Calliope. It can't respond to you. It's never going to you. It's not conscious, you know. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> it spoke to me. What? The rock <laughs> spoke to me. I don't believe you. Well, it's true. What did it, what did it say? Not much. Calliope, I know you've always loved a good story. No, it definitely spoke to me. It said my name. And it said that it was called Granite. Granite? Really? <laughs> anyway, um, got to go. Be late for my keyboard lesson. Hey, Jason. Hey, Danny, mate. Calliope avoiding me again. It's not just you. I hardly get a look in these days. Huh? And you were like brother and sister. Well, well. <laughs> See you then, mate. <laughs> He didn't seem all that upset about it. <laughs> and I thought he liked her. Hey, mate. I need your geological knowledge. Really? You once said I was wasting my time studying geology. And now I should be learning coding instead. <laughs> well, changed my mind. I've been talking to Calliope. I think she's going to ask me some questions about rocks. I need to have some answers. Hold on. My brother Danny, who's best friends with Calliope, so she doesn't even have time to hang out with him because of some obsession with the moor. So I hear. So how come she's talking to you then? Or am I missing something? If you promise to share some geology with me, I'll put you in the picture. Hey Jason, Aston, what picture are you talking about? Can I help? I love drawing. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you need worry about, Wayfarer. What are you lot up to? The rehearsing Danny's play. About Bam and the Vera. Really? That dodgy old myth? Shouldn't you be practising your coding? We're all going to need to program robots in the future. Maybe, but this is more fun. <laughs> we'll leave you to it then. <coughs> OK. Ivy, you can be La Vera. You can be Bam and Logan. And Spindle and I, when Spindle gets here, can be part of La Vera's coven of witches. Don't we need to wait for Danny? He might want to cast it differently. Maybe, but he said I was the director. Hey, Spindle. Hey. Danny's found a better place for us to rehearse. You coming? on the rise watched a line of black clouds moving across the waste the stratus whitened as it approached until it appeared lighter than the rock whose outcrops it was now absorbing, the granite darkening in contrast as if through tonalisation. Gryson, tonalisation, being processes whereby vapours had whitened and darkened the granite for hundreds of millions of years. A cloud swept in, bringing the rain on the wind's breath.
It's colder today. And it's trying to rain. Apparently, I need to give myself a good talking to, according to Danny. Why are people always saying that? What's so good about a talking to? It always feels bad. Only I know what I heard as far as anyone can know anything. So, I'm going to give it another shot. Retest reliability, etc. Rock, my rock, can you hear me? Yes. See, Danny. Or rather, hear, Danny. <laughs> if only you were here. Can you repeat that? That. That. Well, that sounds like an echo. I want to know if you can hear me in an intelligent fashion, with a reaction that I can't predict. Yes. You can. Lord George me, my father. <laughs> what, what's that got to do with anything? A reaction that you couldn't predict. I see. Very good. So, Granite, you know my name. It was the first thing you said to me. You said it beautifully. How old are you? Millions of years. Only millions? Hundreds of millions of years. And have you been conscious of the planet around you? All that time? Yes. How wonderful. Tell me about your history. I came from liquid magma. <laughs> an igneous pluton. Known as a corner bean baffling. That was intruded and solidified at depth. And the sandstone mountains during the time of the Variscan orogeny, 280 million years ago. The Variscan what? Orogeny means a mountain <laughs> building event. Oh. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Basically, one of the two big continents, Gondwana, shifted northwards, crashing into Laurentia. <coughs> to form the supercontinent, Pangaea. This resulted in the uplift known as the Variscan orogeny. I see. So what happened to you after that? How did you go from an igneous pluton solidified at depth to a block on a tour in the open air of Dartmoor? Gradually. During the Permian and Triassic <coughs> periods, the sandstone mountains were eroded, and then the hot, wet climate of the Eocene. Hang on, when was that? Fifty million years ago, the hot, wet climate weakened the granite chemical along jointing that had been created during differential rates of cooling to frost in the ice ages of the Pleistocene, prize the joints apart to give the tours the form you see today. You have been through so much. I've known mountains as high as the Alps weighing down on me. I've endured desert sands, tropical storms, I've had tree roots growing around me, clasping onto me for dear life. I've shuddered at the tread of dinosaurs, and shivered at the roar of their extinction. I've seen wolves, wildcats, elks, aurochs, cave lions, cave bears, woolly mammoths, straight tusked elephants, woolly rhinoceros, macaques, <laughs> and reindeer. 
all gone now. Been submerged in the Cenomanian transgression of Cretaceous times. And sharks wing past my nose. So, um, did you see Sir Walter Riley when he passed by as Lord Warden of the Stanleys in October 1600? I'd love to know what he was wearing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was only interested in gold, El Dorado. He was interested in tin as well. He was a metals man, and I'm surprised you didn't know that, Granite. <laughs> a rock can't know everything. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. What about your metals? My metals? Yes, your mineral veins and trace elements. Uh, um, How are you constituted? <laughs> I'm quiet on me again, Grant. Oh well. It's time to go home now anyway. But I'll be back another day. Then I want to hear what you're made of. Why couldn't I have had a girl like me years ago? from another planet. Believe her. But she looks just like a human. So do the robots, and we know some of those aren't human. I mean, <coughs> I agree. It is difficult to tell who anyone is under the surface these days. But seriously, Kepler-186F in the constellation Cygnus? I mean, come on, who's really going to be from there? It's over 500 light years away. Shh, yes. <coughs> Hello. Lana. Hello, Wayfarer Spindle. <clears throat> How's the search for your father going? I haven't found him yet. I know he's one of the Tors, but I don't know which one. And you don't think it's Bowman's nose? We're doing a play about an ancient hunter who was turned into stone. Apparently that story was made up by someone writing a book in the 20th century. No, I'm sure he's a Tor. I've visited lots now, looking for a clue. I see. Tell us, Lana, what's it like growing up on Kepler-186F? Do you have the same things there as here on Earth, like forests and rivers and mountains and wild animals? Oh, and are there cities? There are scrub trees rather than forests. The haunt of boulder birds, which have wings but can't fly. They run around giving a cry like a peacock. They don't have any predators except us. The rivers run purple. Volcanoes dominate the land. There are no cities, just small collections of dwellings, like villages. But they are all connected by thoughts. By thoughts? Yes. Wait, how come on your planet there are people just like us here on Earth when the environment's so different. Oh, but there aren't. When I travelled to Earth, I took on human form on Kepler-186F. I had three eyes, mm. and I'll have three eyes again when I return there. I see. You'd see better if you had three eyes, mm. but it doesn't do to look different here. No, of course not. <laughs> see you then. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Alien. <laughs> what is the liar? Come on. Mate, I appreciate it. 
You shall me talk. She wants to know more and more about me. Well, about granite. Now she's even asking me what minerals I'm made of. Oh yeah? So what did you tell her? Went quiet on her. How am I supposed to know? <laughs> Mate, please, you've got to help me. Well, Jason, I have to say this is getting ridiculous. What's she going to do when she finds out you've been... How shall I put it? Taking advantage of her gullibility? She's going to be very angry. Is this where I can talk to her and spend time with her? Can you really be serious about a girl who's daft enough to think she's in love with a rock? Kalioki isn't normal, Jason. Or at least she's just playing a game with you. Nobody's normal these days. <coughs> <laughs> we don't live in normal time. <laughs> Can't even tell if someone's a human or an android robot. Such circumstances, you can see why someone might prefer a rock to someone purporting to be human. <laughs> Mate, please, give me the lowdown on some minerals. We are listening. You've activated the voice. Why? Because you used the word lowdown. Don't say anything else. I heard that. <laughs> All right, you mad barbed wire badger. Heat me under the fridge larches, waiter. What was that? <laughs> None of your business. <coughs> Man down. And a starty. What can I do for you both today? I want to know if it's true that the authorities are planning to bury nuclear waste on Dartmoor's rocks. Of course not. This is a national park, after all. And I am not very happy about the influence your philosophy is having on my daughter, Calliope. I don't think I've met her. Well, she reads your work. And because of your writing, she's become attached to a rock on the moor. Because she believes there's consciousness. And she spends all her time with it. Ah. Is she a good friend of Danny Crocker's? Yes, they grew up together, best of friends. Danny has indeed talked about her when he came for an appointment with me at a mayor's surgery. <laughs> Quite a family, those Crockers. But let's get on with our own appointment, shall we? I want to know about this plan to store nuclear waste on Dartmoor. I've told you there isn't one. No smoke without fire. The fire you smell is the fire within. Pure kernel. Seed of consciousness. Nux vomica. I beg your pardon. <laughs> when the wind sings in the thorn trees, the sedges listen. He's bonkers. <laughs> I don't think our lives are in his hands. Do you know the legend of King Midas? <laughs> Remind me. Oh dear, I seem to have forgotten it. As his ears. <coughs> Are you drunk or something? No, no, just a slight buzz around the ears. What has all this <laughs> got to do with the burying of nuclear waste on Dartmoor? Think about it. Oh, that's the trouble with you. Always thinking and never doing. If the last election hadn't been rigged by the authorities, then I would be mayor. Rigged by the authorities. You might want to rephrase that statement. The voice. If I were you, I would do what it says. The last election was not rigged by the authorities. That's better. Let's go with Starty. We're better off raising some direct action. Oh, you mean a protest demonstration? Demonstrations are forbidden. Come on, before we get arrested. <laughs> but why? I only have one scene in the second half. It's not really worth coming to all the rehearsals for that, <laughs> is it? I've got better things to do in this time. I thought you said I was going to be the main part. You are, Spindle. You are. 
Ivy says you told her she was the main part. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I did. She is the main part. She's just not as main as you are. <laughs> well, in that case, I would have thought I should appear in every scene. Oh, fine, I'll talk to Danny, see if you can rewrite the script. Good. How's it going, director? Nightmare. They all want to be the main part, and without learning their lines. Come off it, Wayfarer. Who do you think they are? Old star Hollywood divas? Marilyn Monroe or something? Tell them you'll get the robots to do it instead. I don't think the robots will understand the idea of a play. <laughs> They're not the only ones. There must be an easier way for our big brother to persuade Calliope the rock is bad for her. I said I'd do it, so I'm gonna go for it. Danny reminded me, that's what our dad always says. Just don't let the world walk over you. All right, little sister. of the blue moon Astarte but I want to infuse my crystals with its light in the most sacred place possible using its energy to prepare us for battle against the barriers of nuclear waste it is my belief that we will only win this war with magic <coughs> and you don't think Tiara was telling the truth when she said Ian misspoke no I do not he gave me a straightforward confession. You wouldn't say that was under duress? Or balancing a crystal on someone's forehead? Duress? No. That performance by Haken about King Midas. Well, I smell a rat. Hey, you don't think he's a robot, do you? You know, one of those philosophical zombies he's always on about? No. Robots are like the voice. Definite and never dither. Now, where's that blue moon? The moon's been behind the clouds for a long time. A brief moment it did come out. It didn't look blue to me. A blue moon isn't blue. Okay. A blue moon is a rare second full moon in a month. Okay, no dramas. This is the spot here, underneath the tor. I'm sure the clouds will part soon. Quickly, lay the crystals out. In a circle, with the amethyst in the centre. Hurry, before the clouds part. Have you got the white sage smudge stick? Yeah, who it is? Well, light it then so we can cleanse our auras. Uh, I've got the lighter. Whoops. Put the smudge stick away. We've no time to light it anyway. See? The moon. Hail moon, shimmering shine. Make your rare blue energy mine. And against the plans of fools, align my crystal's molecules. Ooh. I think 
the storm's coming. The moon is angry, and quite rightly so. time only appear on their faces as motion of earth and sky the fire and the frost the winds screech and cry the <coughs> rains abrasion barbed wire badger messages on my phone so I came up. Oh, I've got some news. Where from? Well, Mandan told me that according to her crystals, the first shipment of nuclear waste is due to arrive this autumn to be deposited in an old tin mining tunnel on Dartmoor. According to Mandan's crystals? Yes. I help with identifying the crystal sometimes. She knows I studies a, studied as a geologist. She told me that she exposed the crystals to a blue moon, they aligned themselves, and she could feel what they were telling her. What are you on? <coughs> Since when did you believe in crystal ball gazing? <laughs> yeah, all right. But it does tell you what I overheard at Matt Worthy. Ian was lying to me, I'm sure of it. National Energy are behind this. And he knew about it all along. We have to expose him. But what can we do against the power of the authorities? We have to try. Still, brothers? Yes, brothers. And not a word to anyone. Oh, um, how's that geology going with Calliope? Good. Good. If I can remember it correctly, Plagio clays. Ortho clays. Any other clays? <laughs> Here is a thing of constancy. This place that changes slowly. These streets, these trees, this hillside mist's melancholy. Here is a thing of trustfulness. This face without pretense. A rock the weathers and shows each day the same difference. Granite, can you hear me today? I can hear you. Wonderful. You were going to tell me what you were made of, what your constituents are, the things that enable you to be conscious. Equal proportions of plagioclays and orthoclase feldspar alongside quartz and biotite, which is a mica, 
a Muscovite, also a Mica. Also, Tourmaline, Appetite, <laughs> Topaz, small amounts of Lithium, Boron, Cesium, Uranium, Zircon, Fluorine, Gallium, Germanium, hmm. Rubidium, Tin, Tantalum, Tungsten, and Thallium, and even the odd flake of gold. I suppose you would know that sort of thing, if you are that sort of thing. But, well, according to Haken, those constituents don't in themselves make you conscious. What about your energetic buzz? Uh, my energetic buzz? Yes, your your particles in flux. My particles? Well, I imagine that's why you're able to be conscious. Hagen says that rocks have electron flows which produce currents, and the trees then pick them up. What does he know? Well, Hagen knows <laughs> everything. He's my guru. Listen, I tell you. Haken writes they're coming back again. Now they've found ten tools in the nesting season. I'm going to see if I can catch sight of it. It's hers. Better good sex. Yeah, interesting. Jason, what are you doing here? Uh, I was, um, I was just... Yes, just what? Just... walking. Well, why are you holding my diary? Oh. Is it yours? I found it on that rock. Yes, I... I left it there and then came back for it. Can I have it, please? It's private. Yeah, I, I just thought that um, I should protect it from the rain. <laughs> <laughs> when the sun's actually out. Really? <laughs> Did you see that granite? Boy I know from college. He almost went off with my diary. With my thoughts about our deepest conversations. That wouldn't have done, would it? Are you there? You're very quiet suddenly. Oh well. I suppose Mother will be missing me. Festivities take place out on the open moor. Under the grey face of the granite. Oh, 
People of Dartmoor, once again we are gathered here on the tour for our midsummer festivities near the ancestral standing stone. We have been given special dispensation by the voice, a temporary event notice, which means our festivities will not activate a response from it. And so just for this afternoon, we can say anything we like, within a reason. The Skylarks, whose numbers have come back up with the aid of the stewardship schemes, are singing overhead to aid our awareness of cosmic consciousness. Yawn! All is well with our Dartmoor world. Everywhere robots are making life easier for us, even in this era of global warming. No, no, no to nuclear waste! No, no, no to nuclear waste! I thought you told Mandan that the secret you let slip was a mistake. Perhaps they're just protesting in general terms. Can I assure you all there are no plans read my lips, no plans to store nuclear waste in Dartmoor's rocks. Forget the protesters. It's Haken who protests too much, methinks. Methinks? Hamlet. <laughs> Wake up, Ian. What a Philistine you are. <sighs> so you can put your banners away. And this year, I am told, we have a play to watch. Written for our entertainment by Mr Ooh. Danny Crocker, and produced by his sister, Miss Wayfarer Crocker. If Danny is going to be Mr, then I want to be Miss. Wait, you wrote it? Yes, didn't I tell you? Watch carefully. It's all about the origin of stone. So, without further ado, may I hand you over to our actors, led by Ms. Wayfarer Crocker. Sometimes we witches turn into hares. Suppose you hunted one of those hares and your hounds killed it. You would be a murderer. I cannot be held responsible for the dark arts of witchcraft. Do you want a world in which magical power is at the beck and call of human whim? Do you want a world where conscious beings with their precious souls are ruthlessly exterminated? People who turn themselves into animals should be discouraged. It is not civilised. I will go on hunting hares, even if some of the witches, as you claim. And if a winged witch ends up mauled to death by my hounds, too bad. It won't be my fault. I see your heart is as hard as the more stone rocks. Out of my way! Well, don't say you haven't been warned. <laughs> Under Crippen, with the Hain Brook streams, Lavira and her witches coven, cauldrons over flames, boiled up yellow poisonous herbs, gathered from the hills, carefully concocting the potions of their spells. Bowman has done it again! What has he done? He's knocked over our cauldrons with his hands. Tried to reason with them, but he wouldn't listen. He must be taught a lesson. I will transform myself to a hare, and when he chases me, I will lure him into an ambush. That is the ultimate punishment for wrongdoing. I will use my... We use a spell to turn him stone. That is the, the ultimate, ultimate punishment for wrongdoing. His evil will be locked up in rock forever as a warning to others. Over bog and over tall, Bowman hunted through the moor, chased a hare transformed from woman, and left his doom for hunting human. Vera, making him atone, 
cast his badness into stone. It wasn't like that. The farmers were paying him to chase the hares off the new corn shoots, which they were so fond of eating. In those days, there weren't just one or two hares you'll be lucky to see, like now. There were thousands of them, and they descended on the lands like locusts. <coughs> if the hares had been allowed to eat the corn, everyone, including the witches, would have starved. How does she know? I know, because my mother told me. With, uh, with Lavera, it was personal. She had wanted my father for herself, but chose my mother, an alien, instead. <laughs> she had tricked one of those who had come with my mother from Kepler 186F to lend her a transformation stick and turn my father to stone. Well, this is an interesting challenge. So hold, <laughs> hold on. Let's apply some logic here. I thought this myth happened hundreds of years ago. So it did. But you said Bowerman chose your mother, and you're a teenage girl. Me and my mother come from a planet you humans call Kepler 186F in the constellation of Cygnus. Our time is not your time. Here we go. I know I said we're allowed to say anything we like, but really. Bowerman is her father. Well, she thinks her mother was pregnant with her when Bowerman was turned to stone, and somehow they miraculously travelled 500 light years back to Cygnus. Yes, that's what she told me. And that <coughs> is where Lana was born and grew up with three eyes. Three <laughs> eyes? Wacky imaginations these drama people have. <laughs> <laughs> that's what will happen to our children if we store nuclear waste on Dartmoor. <laughs> exactly. I can only see two eyes. Well, apparently she adopts human form among humans so as not to stand out from the crowd. I am sure she can speak for herself. My father was not called Bowerman, but yes, my father is in these rocks. I come bearing gifts to lay in remembrance. Past many planets, seas and lands, I come, Father, to lay my hands at your poor funeral rites, to breathe in vain on silent stone, bequeath lastly the gifts of death. Alas, since fate, dear father, stole your face from me, plucking you out of season, accept these flowers, which by reason of ancient custom I have laid, as doleful funeral gifts, and made much poor daughterly weeping on. Greetings, father, forever gone. Untouched. But did you grow up on Kepler 186F? Yes. How did you get here then? It's been pointed out the planet is hundreds of light years away. Nothing can travel faster than light, and you can't be more than 15. On our planet, we have our ways. Hey everybody, respect please. My play has been rudely interrupted and I would like it finished. Well, we all know what happens next. He gets deservedly punished by a death in which he gets turned to stone. I got the message, Danny. Rocks are bad guys. Except Lana doesn't seem to think so. It's what you would put into the rocks that makes them bad. Exactly. A man who hunts a woman. Isn't that you? No. Why me? I mean the irradiation and pollution that will pollute us for millennia. Ian knows, don't you, Ian? No. This is all... Nonsense! There are no plans to store nuclear waste in the rocks on Dartmoor. As chief executive of the leading national energy provider, with a policy of using nuclear power as our main weapon in the fight against CO2 emissions and the global warming, I should know, shouldn't I? So there are no plans? Just like there were no rats. Exactly, Astor. <laughs> Why is he talking about rats? Oh, okay. Hush, hush. While I was building a wall for Ian's patio, I overheard an argument he was having with Tiara about the storage of nuclear waste. He claimed that they had been actually talking about rats being attracted to the council's nuclear waste bags, which incidentally don't exist. When I pointed out that his compost bags weren't see-through, 
He tried to tell me that they'd actually been talking about wasting the nuclear option, <laughs> something like that, in terms of getting the Dartmoor authorities to widen the lanes for his self-driving car by flattening the hedge banks. Flattening the hedge banks? <laughs> you utter barbarian, Ian! This is a <laughs> national park! <sighs> we... Oh, right! Oh, right! I'm not going to stand any longer for being called a Philistine and a barbarian! Of course there are plans to store nuclear waste on the What? <coughs> We've got to put it somewhere! And Dartmoor's granite, well away from urban centres of population, it's the obvious choice. So you're going to pollute the source of my healing crystals? The source of our life-giving water reservoirs? No, 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 no to, to nuclear, nuclear waste. waste. No, 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 no <laughs> to nuclear <laughs> waste. Wave that more skyline, the wind turbines, would you rather that? You can't seriously be suggesting this is an option, Ian. No, no, but... Rocks given the... have rights, you know. What do you mean, rocks have rights? Oh, oh here we go. It's all kicking off now. Well, what does Haken say, <laughs> our philosophical mayor? Do rocks have rights? Lana just put flowers at the foot of our rock and addressed it as her father. Well, in order for anything to be accorded rights under the World Convention, it must be capable of consciousness. How do you prove that, then? You kick it. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> kicking off. What? And see if it screws up his face in agony. <laughs> You are way out of order, Danny. Ask Mehaken. That's what he taught me. Perhaps a more orthodox test would be the one applied by the philosopher Thomas Nagel in the case of his bat. When we had bats, of course, before global warming and pesticides made them extinct. What were bats? <laughs> They're things you hit balls with. Wait, we've still got loads of those? So you're telling me my ping pong bat is conscious? <laughs> uh, bats were flying mammals that navigated using sonar. Using the example of a bat, because their way of life is so different from us humans, Nagel argued that an organism has consciousness if, and only if, there is something that it is like to be that organism. Something it is like for that organism to be itself. The qualia of being that thing. Is there anyone who would say that they know that there is something it is like to be a rock? I somehow doubt it. Yes. What? There is. I know. You do? I know exactly what it's like to be a rock. <laughs> <laughs> to be talked to like a rock. To be called my name as a rock. To be joked with as a rock. Tell my personal history as a rock. To be loved as a rock by Calliope. The rock was you, Jason. Yes, I was hiding in the cave underneath. I thought you would have realised when you saw me with your diary. I'm sorry. But, but how did you know all that stuff about the rock's geological history and all the minerals it was made of? I mean, you don't even do geography. Uh, I'm afraid he came to me for that side of things. I studied as a geologist. I started off pretending. The empathy that I had to use in keeping up that pretense. So let me see rocks in a different light. I promise you, strange as it may seem, I see myself becoming a rock. A conscious being that's endured down the centuries. It still enjoys the glory of the sunset, just as Calliope does. I ask you, what are we supposed to believe these days? That we're humans, some of us, having the wool pulled over our eyes. Isn't that sheep? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Danny. It was a rhetorical question. In the light of what we've heard, and taking out my metaphorical scales for ethical justice, with rights and consciousness in one pan and rock in the other, I pronounce that since Jason has shown us we can understand what it is like to be a rock, rock indeed does qualify under the convention as having rights. Yay! <laughs> so of course you can't bury nuclear waste underneath a rock which has rights. 
Oh. Lana? Where is Lana? She's gone. She's probably on her way back to Kepler 186F. Eating up the light years and regrowing her third eye. <laughs> Personally, I respect Lana's feelings for her father. I can understand that. But do we want our moorland skyline full of dark, satanic windmills? That's the alternative. Perhaps. That was the policy I originally espoused. Can you keep out of this, please, Ian? <laughs> you never let me finish what I'm saying. I haven't been able to finish my play. Our, Our play. play. So, I'm going to say my piece now. Even if we allow the burying granite under Dartmoor's rocks might damage the environment, and even if Haken agrees as a, as a result of Calliope's obsession and Lana's weirdness that rocks have rights, and even if Ian admits a private preference for wind turbines and the moorland skyline, we're not going to change the minds of the authorities. Those with the real clout. Be practical. As ever, you argue well, Danny. And I can't fault your logic. But I'm going to go out on a limb here. Whatever anyone's doubts about our capabilities, if all the people agree that a course of action is wrong and don't argue amongst themselves, I believe no amount of authority will ride roughshod over them in the long run. Look at Jason. By persevering and pretending to be a rock, he has actually become one through empathy and as a result has managed to sway this assembly. He's a hero! <laughs> Jason, you are not a hero. You're an idiot, and I'm still so angry with you. Good girl. <laughs> but I suppose you have done something sort of... Well, there's no word for it. Hopeful. <laughs> Crust. Sinking, walking, living, moving, moving, always moving, keeping the world at one, core beneath. and the air above and the sun, I flow, spread, crack, I build, break down, remold, beds of sediment, fold on mountain fold, Blacklith and Pluton, Wipe and dike, and vein. French fault and rift valley. Shelf and peneplain. Pipe and dike and vein. I, I am the living. living. 